Hey and welcome back. First part in a three part series We're looking at the Axeman's to craft AC260B bandsaw. This episode we're going to unbox it. That sounds good. Stick around. Hey and welcome back to The Wood Grafter. I'm Andy Gar, and our mission here is to inspire, educate and support you in your journey to becoming a better woodworker. We do that through a whole series of video productions. We do project builds, we do news from the industry, we get together every month and have a jolly old chat and we do two reviews such as this one where we look at something like a bandsaw. So if you're not a subscriber, subscribe now give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. I love to hear what you think and I love to respond to you and I do read everything that you send to me. We also have a website www.thewoodcrafter.com and over there you're going to find detailed project builds, a vibrant community, free plans and just generally a good place to hang out if you're a woodworker. So what have you got to lose? Get over there now, grab yourself a free membership and with that said, let's look at this beast. A bandsaw is one of those things that's been on my wish list for quite a period of time and the thing that finally pushed me over the edge to actually buy one was at the end of the coffee table build I had a whole host of offcuts. I always buy in my stock in rough sawn form and then I mill it inside the shop that was why we bought the planer jointer that you've seen in a previous review and it worked really really well and I love the idea the freedom of buying thick stock milling it down building the product but you end up with stuff left over here's a big nice quite slab of poplar here's some cherry that's knocking around here's an impressive chunk of oak and these are the sort of things that you end up with once you finish the project now this is great size stock to reuse in craft projects cutting boards, pen boxes, jewellery boxes, maybe turn pens, that sort of thing. But the problem is, proportionally it's too thick for the size. So I want to be able to reuse this, I want to be able to rip this down, to re it, to give me smaller components. And out of this size of oak, I could probably get four good size boards that are ideal for some finer woodwork in the crafts projects. And as you know, I want to move into the craft side of the business. So. This is great, so that was the big driving reason. The other thing is I love the idea of the bandsaw so I can start to put curves in in the designs. Now a lot of my designs at the moment are very, very structured, you know, they're very, very square. I want to get some more organic shapes inside that. And for that I need to be able to cut those organic shapes. What a better thing for doing that than the bandsaw. So they're the reasons why I personally have now invested in the bandsaw. Don't have an awful lot of room in the workshop, but I do have a conveniently spaced hole here. So I'm thinking I can move the capex down a little bit and here's going to be a perfect place to put the bandsaw. It's near the power socket and it can fit in quite easily into the air extraction system that we spoke about in a previous video as well. So today, let's unpack this. I've not even opened the box. It's arrived from Maxminster this morning. It's on a beautiful little wooden pallet. It's as heavy as you like. Let's get it open and see what's inside. So right on the very, very top, the first thing we see is a manual, which is quite a good idea. Now this is available in PDF format as well, over on the Axminster website. And as you can see, there's three models in this range. We have the AC1950B, the AC2305B, and the AC2606B. These numbers, 1950, 2305, 2606, that relates to the length of the blade that sits inside it. And obviously they've got different motors and different cutting capacity. We have bought the AC2606B, but these are very, very similar, these two models here. The size is different. This has got some different features on, and we'll just contrast and compare as we go through the build. So perfect, we've got a nice manual. Ooh. Next thing we have is a rip fence, aluminium extrusion. It seems reasonably solid, but time will tell. Oh, and there, there she is. There's the baby. Let's try and dig out the bits and bobs that we need here. Oh my giddy ant! It comes with obviously a table. And this is super heavy. 
This is a cast iron table, it's one of the reasons I bought this model over cheaper models, it's for that cast iron table. And all three of these bandsaws come with that cast iron table. Excellent. Whoa. Covered in grease, beautiful, what you'd expect. <sighs> Dust extraction hose. Comes with a floor mounting stand. Some more of the stand. Two Jubilee clips. No doubt for attaching the hose to something. An air vent. Comes with a push stick and inside there there looks like there's some tools, a spanner, a couple of allen keys. Quite useful. A plastic knob and a blade insert one assumes. A bag of bolts um, which has been which is ripped and open. Okay. And there's also some rubber feet inside that bag. And finally, the start of the show itself, the Axminster 14 inch AC2606B bandsaw. Now this is the craft range, you can tell that by its beautiful bright red colour. And what that basically means, it's not got all the bells and whistles that you're going to find in the trade range. What it does boast is the cast iron table, a 1.1 kilowatt motor, so there's bags of power in this, a maximum cut capacity of 200 millimetres, and the range of braids up to 25 millimetres wide. So the business end of this, the power, its capacity, and the blade side is not a compromise at all. Really, really, really good, really pleased with that price. Price point was around about 630 UK pounds for this, and this is now April 2020. So yeah, really, really pleased. So in terms of specifications, the baby of the bunch, the 1950B, again the craft range, it's got a 550 watt motor inside it, blade speed of 660 or 840, uh, meters per minute, blade length of 1950 millimeters, and a blade width of 6 to 13 millimeters. Table size overall is 350 by 330, and the maximum width of cut is 260 millimeters. It's got the cast iron table on it, and that one tilt from 0 to 45 degrees, and it's got a 63 millimeter dust extractor port on it, and it weighs 39 kilograms. So that's not a bad little spec on the smaller device. The next one up, the 23005B, it's got a 750 watt motor on it, blade speed of 360 and 720 millimetres. The blade length is 2305 millimetres and the width will go from 6 millimetres to 16 millimetres. Maximum width of cut is 315, um, the table size is bigger, 400 by 500 millimetres. And again, it's got the cast iron table, 0 to 45 degree tilt, and this time it comes with a 100 millimeter dust extractor port, and the overall weight is 66 kilograms, so a good spec. Now the one that we've gone for, it's got the 1.1 kilowatt motor in it, a blade speed of 600 or 840, the blade length is 2606 millimeters, but the width of that blade can be six millimeters to 25 millimeters. That's the best part of an inch. That's a wide, wide blade. Now, wide blades are better, I believe, when you're doing rip cuts because it stops the blade tracking so much and it gives you a better and a straighter finish. And given the fact I want this to be able to rip through some of that stock we looked at, that's a very good thing. Again, it's got the cast iron table, much bigger table again, 480 by 500 millimeters, and you can see it here, it's a big table. Um, again, 0 to 45 millimeters tilt, and it's got an extractor of 100 millimeters, and it's an 85 kilograms weight. And even without the table on, this beast feels heavy. So I need to think about how the heck I'm going to get that onto its stand. But there we go, that's what it does. So there you go, that's now on box. You see what we get into the kit. The next job is we'll get this thing assembled. See you in the next video.